Okay, in this presentation what we're going to look at is a dice roll experiment. Now, the purpose of this dice roll experiment is, it's a bit of a crude way of doing it, but it sort of helps us get an idea, a proper idea about the central limit theorem, and so on, and also sort of p-values and so on. So I'm not, it's not that I'm going to get into what central, the central limit theorem is, or what p-values are, but it's just, if you're, when you're looking at that and watching this video, I think this will help you out. So what we're going to do is perform an experiment, dice roll experiment, is we're going to roll a fair die, now capital fair die, 100 times, okay? And what we're going to do then is sum up the 100 uh, outcomes, okay? So, for example, uh, one, if, I'll tell you what, let's even just like, so what the command we're going to use is sample, okay? And we're going to sample 1 to 6, 100 times, okay, and replace equals true, okay. So, just to make it a little bit easier, I'll just dial this down to 10, but for the sake of numerical, uh, being able to do this in your head or follow what's going on with your head without having to make any extra calculations, I'm going to keep it to 100 dice rolls, okay. So, um, let's roll that. And that's a uh, the the hundred dice rolls. Sorry, ten dice rolls in this particular instance. Now, curiously enough, we get one five times purely by random, and we got five two times, and three two times. Okay, let's do it again. You see, we didn't get a different set of results. All of a sudden, now we're getting a lot of sixes, and so on. The idea is actually, you might notice this is that everything starts to balance out after a while. Although I've noticed we've not had a lot of threes yet. So, a couple of threes there, a couple of threes there. Now, all of a sudden, we're getting, th so getting some threes. It's starting to reach an equilibrium, okay? So, what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to run this experiment again, okay? And so on. Now, so, this is what uh, this is a simulating rolling a dice 100 times, okay? Now, let's just, I'm going to call this my results, okay? or my dice my die okay so table my die so essentially we're getting fairly consistent results there okay run it again you know uh, sometimes uh, the, the, the you know in the first uh, iteration there we got four 24 times and here we got four 14 times and you know, it's start. They all seem to sort of balance out after a while. Then we can actually just roll it up to a, um, a thousand there, just to sort of see what happens. You know, pretty consistent here. Okay. Now the thing is, uh, if we were to roll it like six hundred times, now just to, I'm just going to finish off this here. Six hundred times, we should get one hundred each. Okay, because each roll is equally likely. Okay. But as it turns out, we'll get a bit of fluctuation around that 100, okay? So, uh, what it means, if you roll a, a dice 600 times, you would expect each uh, of the four, uh, each of the six numbers to appear 100 times in equal amount. But the thing is, that doesn't actually happen in practice. Okay. Now, let's go back to my experiment here. And we the experiment was 100, okay? So, that we're going to stick with that from now on, okay? Now, the reason we're going to do that is because what we're going to do is we're going to sum it up, okay? Now, we're going to sum that up, okay? And in this case, when we uh, sam uh, when we uh, calculate, or when we roll a dice 100 times and get a, number, a set of numbers like that, we should get numbers pretty consistently close to 350, okay? See, DICE has, uh, to here it is, 354. If I run it again, 364, 328. With a little bit of give and take, we're seeing them consistently around the 350 mark, okay? Now, that one above at the top there was just, every so often we're going to get extremely, or high results and low results and so on. Okay. So, um, so far so good. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a little experiment. And we're going to, 
this is the this is our experiment just to generate a number like that that is an experiment okay and what we're going to do is repeat this experiment um uh, 100,000 times okay so numeric so what we're going to do is collect them up in a in a in a uh, my my sums what we're going to do is collect them up in a blank uh, vector like that okay so this is just a numeric data object and we're going to consistently add uh, summations to it okay so for uh, let's just call M here 100,000 just to make it outside okay Um, there we go. So for this is a for loop. So for i in one to m, what we're going to do is add my sum. So we're going to incrementally add um, and uh, re recreate my sums with an updated summation. Okay. Let's just copy and paste it down, paste it there, close that off, and this should take a minute, because we, we're going for 100,000, we're going crazy here. And so what's going to happen here is the outcome of this experiment is going to be in, uh, recreated 100,000 times. And so what happened is, that uh, should happen now, is just we get 100,000 numbers in and around 350. Okay, so it's going to take. It's, uh, this is uh, R is a little bit slow for this, but you just have to bear with me. So um, there's of course now there's all the ways of doing this as well. Um, that you don't use for loops or anything like that. In fact, uh, for loops are not great in R at all, and I'm probably being very ambitious here. What? But anyway. So let's just have a look at the first few cases of my sums. So my sums are the um, the outcomes. So I'm just going to pick out the first 40. Okay. There we go. So, so far so good. Okay. And what we're going to do now is we are going to get a little bit of uh, a histogram of that. Okay, so uh, there's lots of great, great ways to do histograms, but I'm just going to be very lazy today and just do my histogram of my sums. Okay, so there we have it there. Now, what do you notice about that? Okay, what I might do is add in uh, more breaks or something like that. Breaks equals 500. So there's quite a lot in there. Does that look familiar? Have you seen the normal distribution? Okay. So what we have here is 100,000 outcomes of an experiment. Let's just like make that a little bit bigger. 100,000 outcomes of an experiment. Okay. Where we roll a fair dice, one uh, 100 and and sum it up, and we sh should consistently get values around 350. So we don't always get values around 350, or well, we we'll get close, but quite often we might get uh, very, very low ones, okay, or very, very large ones, or very, very, very low sums, or very large sums, and it would be perfectly reasonable. It would be unusual, but reasonable to get uh, results l larger than 400 and lower than 300, okay. Now, so just bear with me a second. Now, the other thing is that you notice that this is a uh, a population of uh, experimental outcomes. So it's a population of numerical uh, outcomes of an experiment. Okay. So this is what the sampling distribution is about. Okay. That the uh, the distribution of possible outcomes from an experiment quite often or is expected to be normally distributed. Uh, the bell curve being that what we're looking at there, normal distribution. Okay, so so far so good. So what I'm going to just do now is um, my sums. Let's just say I'm interested in uh, my sums. How many are less than um, 300? Okay, so I'm not expecting a lot. 
we'll get about 150 there. We can actually get the length of that. So the length of that, how many is greater than 100 or less than 300? About 151. Okay, 151 out of uh, 100,000. Just uh, it's expressing that as a percentage. Just divided by thousand or divided by thousand, less than one point one point five percent. Okay, sorry, not one point five percent, not point one five percent. As in, literally, just close to one sixth of a percent, one in six hundred essentially. Okay. So um. Yeah. So and also let's do it for four hundred. How many are greater than four hundred? Okay, something very similar there. Okay, now that's the interesting thing. So the probability of getting a sum of four hundred or more, and uh, when we pr 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 uh, run this experiment, is about one in six hundred. Okay. Um, so that is that's the idea of what a p-value is actually. Okay. Uh, as uh, now just to be clear. When we did get 400, it was the outcome of a fair result or of a fair experiment. Okay, any time that this did happen, um, any time that did did that this did happen, we it was a perfectly fair result. Okay, um, so actually I should really use greater than or equal to there. Just been, I'm slightly. Uh, loading the dice against it. It's much of a muchness. Anyway, so uh, that is the idea of a p-value. What is the probability of um, the a value of 400 or more given that it is a fair dice? Okay, and it's about, in this case it's probably close to 0.2% as in 1 to 500. Okay, so this is the idea of hypothesis testing and so on is that would we assume that this is a fair dice if we were to get a dice roll experiment would we assume it's a fair dice or is it generated by another case uh, a, a, a crooked dice essentially okay and uh, let's what let's see what i mean by that if we were to have a crooked dice and um, the sum of let's just say for argument's sake it favors high values so what we might do is just not let it have the value one that favors it to be higher okay uh, so uh, if you're not like you know if it favors high values now here let's just say for argument's sake and only get two to six which favors high values it's a crooked dice it means it's more likely to get a number close to 400 okay so if you were to get an outcome of 400 or more would you think crooked or would you think fair but unusual results I would go, in most cases, I would think if I got a score equals an, out an output is 400 or an experimental score is 402, let's say, I would probably go with crooked myself because the probability of it being fair is very, very low or of it being a fair dice is very, very low, but it's not impossible. Okay, so that's the idea of type 1 and type 2 error. All right, we'll leave it there.